Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. As you can see this time around I decided to record my video tutorial in English because of your requests. And uh, of course you know this is not my mother tongue so I beg pardon if the pronunciation is not the best one uh, over the internet. Uh, anyway in this video tutorial I'm gonna show you how to print a web page using JavaScript. I mean we will have a website, uh, half a website because we don't need an entire website to make this demonstration and I will show you how to print the entire web page, the entire website uh, by using vanilla JavaScript. So we are not going to use any um, external library or framework because we don't need that. And after we understand how to print a web page, we will also see that it is possible through CSS to uh, completely customize uh, the appearance and the layout of the printed page, which may even differ a lot from the original page. So let's get started and let's see uh, what is our starting point. So I've got this folder here, Yellow Software, which is a mini project I prepared for you just to make this demo. So inside there is just an index.html file with some markup. There is a style CSS file with the styling of this uh, website and a folder with images. So I'm going to launch this uh, website so that you can see what it is. It is uh, actually a tribute to uh, a website called Giallo Zafferano, which is a um, famous website in Italy for uh, Cooking. And uh, this is the Tiramisu page. I try to, uh, like, let's say, uh, imitate the style. It is, of course, not the original one. And what I want to do in this video is to um, show you how we can print this page or to say it better, to print the essential information about this page. Uh, what I mean is that we will need to tell JavaScript to uh, print a page, but we don't want to show everything inside a printed paper, starting from a video which cannot be played, of course, uh, on a printed paper. So um, first things first, let's go to the uh, HTML and uh, um, let's go to uh, the bottom of the body to add a script tag, which will uh, connect our uh, file for JavaScript. JavaScript. So I'm going to uh, create a folder called JS and a file script.js, which uh, doesn't exist already. Now I'm going to create that. So a folder JS with a file inside named script.js. Uh, now, these two files are connected, but what we need uh, as a first thing is uh, a button which I must add uh, in order to give the user the possibility to click and say, please print this paper. So I'm going to add a button here. Now, um, I tell you this website has been done uh, without any framework except with um, uh, font awesome for the icons. So all the classes are just inside this style CSS. So I'm going to add a class. Uh, of btn which stands for button which is just a little bit of shape and rounded borders uh, inside i'm gonna um, actually put uh, an icon from uh, uh, font awesome which is a uh, class fast fa print for a printer and then add a print page text now i'm gonna give this button an id so that it is easily uh, recognizable inside our javascript let's call it like print button or something like that and there we go now inside the script we need to do uh, two things the first thing is to get this button so i'm gonna take it with const print button equals document dot get element by id print button That's it. And then I want to add uh, an event listener to this button. So I'm going to do a print button dot add event listener. And after the click, I want to run my arrow function. And inside here, uh, what I want to do is uh, printing the page. So in order to do that, I'm going to help myself with another function defined outside. So I'm going to use this print function or print page function, as which is, which is even better. And inside the function, we're going to call this print page function defined outside. So when the user clicks our button, we're going to trigger this function. 
Now, what do we need to do inside this function? We need to use a trick. What I want to achieve is creating a hidden iframe and inside this iframe put the entire web page. After that, we are going to put the focus of the window on this hidden element and call the content window dot print method, which is a method used by uh, the browser to uh, initiate, to trigger the printing um, procedure. So we will see a window um, popping up, a model popping up with all the options for the printing. So let's start. Uh, let's create this frame, which I can call print, uh, print frame maybe. And it's a new element, so document dot create element. As I say, this must be an iframe. Now, this iframe is not, uh, must not be visible to the users, so I could use the uh, visibility hidden uh, CSS properties, but I want to use the display none, because as you know, the visibility property will uh, in any case, uh, take uh, space inside the page, even if it is not visible. So uh, what I do here is uh, taking the print frame, modifying its style, and more precisely, the display put to none, so that we don't have any trace of it inside of the page. Then we have the most important part about print frame, which is, of course, the src attribute, the source. So here I'm gonna put the index HTML, which is our entire web page. After that, I need to append this uh, hidden iframe to my body. So document dot body dot body dot append child print frame, which is exactly what we want. And we need to get focus to give focus to this element. So print frame dot content window dot focus gives the focus to this element and if the element is focused then we can call the print method so it is exactly the same and there we go so let's see if right now our button is correctly connected and when i click it i can see uh, the um, print window pop up with all its options let's try so there is a live server running, so I don't need to refresh the page, uh, or at least I shouldn't. So we should see here the button, which is the button I created right now, our print page button with ID print button. And this is what we are taking inside the get element by ID uh, method. So let's see if everything works correctly or if I made some typo. And there we go. As you can see, we have the uh, print window popping up. Of course, this is the print window of my system, which is a Windows. And we have the whole page inside of the paper. Uh, one thing you immediately notice is that we have all the elements of the page and they are uh, sort of constrained inside the width of an A4 uh, format for the page. Of course, you can save it as PDF or, or you can select your printer. It is the same exact result. Uh, I I'm gonna leave you uh, leave it to PDF later because otherwise uh, my computer is gonna stuck. So let's put it back. And uh, as I said, now we have to find a way to customize our uh, layout to, uh, you know, hide some content, modify some other issues like the font size, um, choose what is essential, what is not inside a in this case, a cooking website and its information. So let's start with the most obvious things, uh, which is uh, removing the uh, header of the website and the footer of the website. So to do that, we need a way to say, OK, please do not display these elements, but uh, show them if we are not printing. So we need to uh, hide them only when we want to print. So to do this, we have um, a very important tool which uh, many of us uh, use daily with CSS, which are the media query. But many people do not know that the media query can be used not only to uh, say which uh, is the width of the viewport, but can also be used to say uh, which media we want to use. We are used to media screen, uh, but nobody uses the media print, uh, which is exactly what we need right here. So I'm going to create a new file, a new CSS file, which is the print 
index.css file. And here I'm going to put our media query with media print, which means like apply the CSS rules only when I try to print the page. So now if I want to remove the footer and if I want to remove the uh, header, what I can do is going into the index HTML. Let me close a little bit of stuff and find the two elements. So we probably have just this header with ID top part. So I'm going to take it like this and there is only one footer. So I'm going to use the tag name directly and say display known and in this way what happens is that when we try again to print the page we will have or we should have actually oh i i forgot to connect the css so I'm not going to remove this part. I want you to see my errors. It's funny. And so this is the print CSS. Okay, now we are connected. Let's try again. Let's try to print. And we can see that the header and the footer are gone. But uh, these are not the only pieces we want to remove. So if I make an analysis on this page and I think of what we want to achieve, I can also say that we probably don't want the rating and the rate button, the plus info button, the social networks, uh, the advertisement, all things that uh, make sense on the website but don't make sense on a paper. So uh, let's try to remove all this stuff. So for example, starting from advertising, advertising, we have a section um, uh, here, which is ads. So let's remove with the class add ads. I'm going to add them to the list of things I want to uh, apply to display none rule. So ads, but also social networks, which is here. So the buttons for the social media, we don't need that social networks. So these are also things that we don't want to take. Uh, other things we don't want, as I said, are the button stuff. So this info, we don't need it. I can remove this dot info with the plus sign. I don't want the rating stuff. So the will receive rating could be hidden. So let's try with this dot receive rating. Okay. Uh, another thing, let's see, let's try again. Let's see if something else must be removed. Uh, I probably don't want the suites and desert stuff up here. So let's remove that also, which should be the recipe category. There we go. So I'm going to add it here. That's it. OK, then uh, another thing I don't want personally is this uh, image here and the button itself. So I want to remove the button, which will be a print button, if I remember well. And the image down there should be here somewhere. The um, Let's say the presentation image. So the presentation image, that's it. Also, one of the most important thing here that I don't want to show is the video, because if I show the video, how can people <laughs> play a, uh, a video in the printed page? So also it is very ugly to see. So I want to remove this and let the um, information here take the whole space. So let's first remove the video, which should be somewhere here. Uh, we should see some section with the video. This is the recipe video section. So I'm going to remove that. OK, and after that, oh, because this blocks the page, so let's try again. OK, and, and I need, as I said, to take uh, this section and uh, spread its content throughout all the space available. So I think it's the recipe info outside this rule, but inside the media query, I'm going to take the recipe info and say, OK, with is 100%, which is very, oops, which is very important. And let's see what is the result we have right now. 
So this is also very cool. Another thing which is not good when we are talking about printing is this background, this gray background, because it consumes ink. So uh, a good idea will be to remove that. Uh, so this is applied to the main. So I'm going to do this main background color. And I'm going to take this to white and also remove all the padding we have because we need all the space possible inside the printed page. And that's it. Now, this is, has become very ugly, this card, because we have a shadow which makes no sense right, right now. So I'm going to remove the shadow and put maybe a border to this card. So we can just uh, go to the uh, recipe card here, take the recipe card. and say a box shadow known and border maybe one pixel solid and a light gray so let's say ddd that's it so let's see how it looks like i'd say this is very <laughs> very good web page now other other things we must fix uh, this title is very very big it's huge and it takes only half of the page uh, this presentation title is also very big and even the font here of the paragraph is super big so let's fix these issues uh, let's take the presentation and let's say that the font size is maybe 0 0.8 ram something like that the presentation title should be an h2 let's see uh it's an h3 so presentation h3 it's gonna be a little bigger maybe one ram um also we said the main title which is the tiramisu traditional reset as a class so it's recipe name Let's take that as the recipe name. Let's make a little bit of order inside here. Okay, recipe name, we say it could be something like font size 1.8 RAM, something like that. Let's try again, print page, oh, so much better. Uh, now, this one is not taking the whole space, so uh, the problem is that in the normal part we have another another uh, section, another piece, which is taking space, so probably this part dedicated to the title, which is the recipe title, has not 100% uh, of the width. So let's try to uh, force it here, so recipe title with 100% and see what happens. Oh, there we go, much better. And one last thing, if you look at this page, there is a very big problem, a very big issue of west space because this card is way too big for what we have to display. So one good thing will be uh, using the float property to uh, take this uh, content, this box, uh, and put it at the side of the text of the presentation. So let's try to do that. Let's try to identify the block, uh, which should be the card, actually. So uh, we already took the card, so it's the the recipe card we can try to say okay let's float to the right i'm not going to put some trick about the glare fix right now because we don't need it in this situation let's see what happens okay let's try again and as you can see this has a much better look for the um, printed web page because we removed all the useless stuff. If we had this website, we probably want our clients to take the recipe, but we want to provide them the essential information to uh, cook, not to give them a lot of stuff that they don't need. So this way it is much shorter. Of course, it's not the complete recipe, but you understand the process. And this is just an example that I make uh, to uh, let you understand that uh, combining the use of JavaScript in the print function with the uh, media query
the print media query, you can actually achieve a great goal, which is that of providing your clients like the printed version of your website with all the essential information they need with uh, a completely different look, uh, which is actually a very good thing for your website. So I hope you learned something good in uh, this um, in this video. Uh, I hope you find it interesting and please comment if you have any other question and I hope to find you all in the next video. Uh, so thank you very much.